What's going on y'all? It's Jacob and we are going to cover everything you need to make 600 horsepower in your Focus ST. So let's get after it. So starting off, I will just assume that your car is fresh off the, not fresh out of the dealership, completely stock, and you want to make a lot more power than the 250 crank horsepower that the car makes. So for starters, you're gonna need, number one, you're gonna need a Cobb access port. So got mine mounted right here. And this is going to allow you to data log, monitor everything the car is doing. It allows you to easily flash new tunes to the car. And it just makes a, a, a lot of tuners use the um, Cobb platform to tune the cars. It makes it a lot easier. Number two, you're going to need the bolt-on modifications done to the car, which is basically increasing airflow to the turbo and increasing exhaust from the turbo so you're going to need an intake you're going to need a downpipe preferably three inch to three inch exhaust if you're going for big power you want to get that back pressure away from the turbo as quickly and efficiently as possible at more bolt-on mods that you're going to need is a front mount intercooler which is which is very important you got to keep those charge temps low you don't want to be increasing 30 to 40 degrees in your charge temps during a pull that's going to cause knock issues that's going to cause ignition issues you got to keep that air nice and cool so we got intake we got exhaust we got an intercooler and with the bolt-on modifications it's usually preferred to run some colder plugs especially if you're running an e30 mix so i'm running the ngk iridium 6510 plugs and they have done even with this power level it's they have done a great job so bolt on full bolt on you're 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 getting the car tuned on e30 you're gonna make around usually 280 290 wheel horsepower with you can get up to 400 plus pound feet of torque which is is something i kind of miss from the stock turbo just having all that like grunt, that low and grunt but Continuing forward, this is this is in my opinion a budget build. So there there are a few things that I considered doing that would would have cost more money that I didn't do just for my driving style for what I'm going to use the car for, and I will point those things out as well. But exterior of the motor, we obviously have the bolt-ons that I just went over, and we upgraded all the charge piping so whenever you go to a big turbo you're gonna need an external blow-off valve so I went with the 3p performance hot side charge pipe and the HKS flange is mounted to that hot side charge pipe and goes from the turbo boop, down underneath to the Mishimoto intercooler down here and then we have another upgraded charge pipe coming cold side from the intercooler to the intake manifold the turbo is a g25 660.92 from garrett and the external wastegate is mounted right there on top of the turbo and we have another 3p performance item it is a dump tube that comes 
just down next to the down pipe and dumps out the bottom of the car. So, you got your charge pipes, you got air getting to your turbo, you have exhaust getting away from your turbo. In my case scenario, I just have a three, three inch catless down pipe go into a MBRP with a muffler delete. It's pretty much straight piped, but it's it's with the with the bigger turbo, it's really not that loud. It's really not that drawny, so I'm just I'm going to rock it. You need fuel. So if you're if you're planning on pushing I think 350 plus, you're going to need to upgrade to a port injection system or a water methanol system. In my case scenario, I went with the stratified port injection, the four port right here. And these have four 550 cc injectors. And that should do that should do good for about six to 650 wheel on an ethanol mix. If you plan on going full E85, you'll need bigger injectors on the rail and you will probably have to upgrade the the low pressure pump and and do some modifications there we have fuel so let's go over the motor build and the transmission build left to right so it's a speed performance two liter pop and drop kit i went with the 2618 alloy pistons the kit comes with head studs timing chain rods pistons head gasket it's a pop and drop kit so in addition to the speed performance two liter pop and drop kit i added the main studs i added main bearings i added a balance shaft delete kit which takes that whole balance shaft out and it's really not it's really not very noticeable with the build as far as vibrations and with higher rpms and stuff like that I added the balance shaft delete kit and I got the crankshaft keyed by speed performance which eliminates the friction washers on the crank and it locks everything into place preventing any sort of timing slip at higher rpms because when you're pushing this power level your wheels start slipping and you're, you know you're going to accidentally hit red line and bounce off the limiter and it's just it's a good idea to make sure your timing is going to stay in place whenever you're you're at 500 plus wheel so built bottom end it's the stock block it's no no sleeves no modification to that these the st has the closed deck block and it's and it's been known to hold good power up to six to seven hundred before these blocks seem to want to crack and then break apart so going from the bottom end over we have a stock head on the car, the stock EcoBoost 2 liter head with stage 3 Piper cams, 80 pound valve springs, and titanium retainers. Like I said, a, a budget build, um, I could have I could have done some work to the head, I could have went with a 2.3 liter head from the EcoBoost Mustang, but I just, I just wanted to rock this one. And so far, it seems to flow very well with the stage three cams. It spools this turbo up in no time. I'm, I'm super happy with, with how the stock head has turned out thus far. And moving on over to the right, I believe I covered everything on the bottom end there. We have a stage three plus spec clutch. Clutch, it is the, uh, the single disc clutch and it, um, it's it's held up very well so far and it's it's kind of on the cheaper end of the price price spectrum but no not much clutch rattle or anything engagement feels good it feels almost close to stock and for the transmission i went in and did a limited slip differential there's there's only a few on the market um i actually i'm at the moment i'm forgetting which brand i went with but went in put in new uh, needle bearings on each side of the differential all you do is just split the transmission open don't mess with the gears unless you're planning on modifying synchros which is another thing i could have done that i didn't do 
is upgrading the synchros and the transmission. I figured I'm not going to be taking this car to the drag strip. I'm not going to be banging first through third with, you know, big old drag tires on it. I'm just, I'm just going to enjoy the car and hopefully, hopefully do some third gear rolls, fourth gear rolls, that sort of thing. So limited slip and the transmission, obviously you need a clutch and the motor is, it's like I said, it's, it's a two liter kept the two liter displacement it's just a couple other things if if you didn't know this is the guardian angel and it is a overboost protection device with a four bar map sensor integrated into it so if you're going to be running 30 plus pounds of boost which is the goal on this setup is about 35 pounds you will need to upgrade the map sensors which there's one on the inner cooler and there is one on the manifold. You'll need to upgrade both of those. The one on the intercooler down here is a direct fit. You plug it in, you're running four bar. The one on the manifold, apparently there's not a direct replacement for that. So you have to run your boost through the guardian angel. And basically this just routes into the blow off valve lining so it comes from the manifold through this box to get the boost uh, boost reading and then it goes down to the the blow off valve all right i think i i think i've covered everything last but not least i did install a ethanol content gauge and that just is right here the sensor's right here and it is tapping into the low pressure fuel hose there's only a couple spots where you can tap it. You can tap it right here next to the high pressure pump, or you can go back to the tank and do that. It was a lot easier. It was a lot easier with good night. What the? It was a lot easier with the motor out of the car just to tap it right here and. I have the gauge right there. It works out pretty well. So before we end the video, video before we end the video you might be asking okay how how is it how is it stacking up how's the power level how is it looking i'm i'm still tuning the car we are currently on 27 and a half pounds on e30 and if you're wondering it on 26 pounds with this setup with this budget build it will the car will will run mirror to mirror with a stock challenger hellcat i don't know how i know but yeah you know it happens 26 pounds i'm assuming it's making right around 500 wheel and the end goal hopefully 34 35 pounds i would i would like to see i'd like to see 570 580 out of this turbo that's it's it kind of being optimistic but there's not, I, I couldn't find anyone who has maxed the G25-660 out on this car with the two liter stock head setup. So I'm excited, we'll, we'll see what it does. I'll keep y'all updated. And when we get the tuning finalized, obviously I'll take her to a dyno and we will see, we'll see what this baby can do. But comment down below, if you got any questions, you need any help with anything, you know, I'm here for you and if you want to do a similar build i encourage it it's been fun and it, it's not cheap but there are definitely there are definitely some some things i left out that I, I could have spent a lot more money on so until next time y'all take care peace